Hi everyone, it's Auntie Kay, Yard Sales Arena, here with Uncle Vinci, the Vintage Tool Man, with some of our yard and estate sale finds for the weekend of April 25th and 26th, 2015. Wow, another really good weekend. There were a ton of sales, so it was really difficult deciding which way to go. Do we go into Annapolis? Do we go into D.C.? You've got to pick one or the other. So we decided to go in close to the University of Maryland to Hyattsville. And boy, did we see an interesting house and cars all decorated up with metal like steampunk. It was wild. I'm going to show you some of that. But we also found some really interesting items that I'm going to show you right now. One of my favorite items was this thing picked it up. I didn't know what it was. The gentleman who was working the sale told me that it was some kind of a telegraph. And uh, Uncle Vinci wasn't sure what it was, but I bought it. I thought, how neat is that? Look, we tested it out. It turns around, it buzzes, it makes a lot of noise. <laughs> but when we got home, Uncle Vitti was able to figure out that it was probably some kind of Morris Code trainer, and that is exactly what it is. It's an Omnigraph Morris Code training set, circa 1910, and it has 15 discs. So it was the deluxe model, if you will. These sell for about $200. I've seen them anywhere from 180, not such good condition, up to 250. So I love this, and I can't believe that we figured out what it was. It does work. These are two little electrical, what do you call connections. those? Connections that you would hook up a speaker to, or headphones, or something like or that. A key, yeah. a key, so that you could actually hear what was going on. Anyway, love that. How do we turn it off? Straight off. I don't know how. I don't want to break it. Okay. Then, another neat item that I found. He had 35 on this, and he sold it to me for 25 but we ended up bundling all of this for 95 This is a 20th century cooler. It's upside down. I know. It's upside down. <laughs> It to be in the reservoir. That's right. This would be down in the in the inverted in the reservoir. It's made by Cordley and Hayes. These bottles on eBay sell for one hundred dollars. The Cordley and Hayes coolers are just incredible. They are just so unique. They sell for at least right now on eBay. There is the reservoir, the metal reservoir, listed for five hundred and fifty dollars, and it will probably sell. These are just really, really neat items. Hopefully, one day I'll be able to afford a reservoir for this because I want one of those. And then the last item was this dough bowl, and the dough bowl needs to be washed out. It's filthy, and then you put mineral oil or almond oil on it, just a light coating, both inside and out. You don't want to use cooking oils because they can go rancid. So that's how you keep your dough bowl nice. And also I got a wooden paddle or treen and this ricer that goes to something else. Two more items in that $95 lot include this vintage Berarducci Brothers C4 wine or fruit press. It was just too neat. I couldn't pass it up. He sold it to me for $40. It was in pieces, so we weren't even sure if we had all the parts. But we got home, we put it together, it does work. We looked online, and these neat old vintage presses, particularly ones that are in good shape, like this one is, sell for $600 and up. So I think I did really well with that item. The other item that I bought was this crock, and it was, what, $15 or $25. The crock is funky. It's cracked. It's a 10-gallon old crock, but I bought it for the lid. The lid doesn't even go to this crock, but I have a few 10-gallon crocks that that lid will fit.
the lids are always broken and really hard to find. So I would have paid $15 just for the lid, which I tried to do, but he wanted to get rid of the whole crock. Anyway, I was happy to get that. We did so well on Saturday at that sale that we decided to go back on Sunday. And I'm glad we did because we once again picked up some really interesting items. I picked up the whole set of the uniforms of the United States Navy. This was issued in 1966. I have the cover. It's not in good shape. And there's about 20 of these pictures that show how the uniforms changed over the years. Really interesting. But that is not all. I also got a book on that. <laughs> I also found a number of these prints that are by different artists, but these are all depicting events and people related to the Navy. Really, really awesome. In that same $110 lot, I got a couple of scales. One is a nice baby scale. I think he charged me $15 for that. This is a beautiful American family scale. The patent date is October 25th, 1898. And oh, you might want to stay down here, Uncle Vinti. It's got this nice brass plate saying manufactured by the First National Cooperative Society, Chicago, USA. So I think this is in really good shape for the age, and I believe he only charged me $10 for that. Pretty good. Okay, there were lots of bottles, but the bottle people were there on Saturday, so... They were pretty picked over, but I did find a bottle that I liked. It says Gilman's Drugs, Washington, D.C. So that was pretty nice. There were a couple of toys. There were a number of neat toys, but again, the toy people were there on Saturday, and they uh, picked most of them. But today on Sunday, I got a couple of banks. This is a Ryder Trucking Company bank. And it actually had a quarter in it. Woohoo! Then I got two of these 8 o'clock coffee cans. Again, they're banks for saving. These actually sell, if they're in decent shape like these are, each one of these sells for $10 on eBay. I had a homemade, I guess that's a hot rod. Dragster. We think this is the engine in the back. It's a cute little car. And it was made by one of the kids of the homeowner, and he signed it for me. He made this back in the day. So I like that. I thought that was cute. I got a couple of 100-gram weights that I can use with some of my scales. I'm going to put this over here. Um, look at this. I got this brass lock. It says American. It's made by American Lock Company. Can you see that? I think you can. And then on the other side, it says U.S. And I didn't know this, but I checked online, and apparently these locks were used with in the military on the foot lockers, particularly in the Army. And I have two sets of keys that also say American Lock Company that go with it. And they work. It works just fine. So I really like that. Then we got a number of chemistry items. This is just a toy little microscope. It does work. It's kind of cute. It's cast iron. How many beakers? Lots of beakers. There are eight of them, ranging from 30 milliliters up to, to a liter. Yeah, these little bitty guys, 30 milliliters up to a liter. We got a Bunsen burner stand. Um, the, we need to take these off, but these are, what do you call those? They have a funny name. Erlenmeyer flasks. Erlenmeyer flasks. Okay, and then we got a graduated cylinder. Graduated cylinder, a homemade test tube holder, and a few little test tubes. And this is also a clamp that can be used for test tubes. Yeah. Yeah. Just a chemistry clamp. Chemistry clamp. Okay. Surprise item in the lot was this thing, this Omicron ellipsograph. 
Is that right? Omicron ellipsograph. Mm -hmm. And I bought it. We didn't really know what it what it was. I think it's a vintage tool for drafting. We knew it made ellipses. Okay, it makes ellipses. Should you need to make an ellipse? Yeah. See. Anyway, uh, we decided to get that. He didn't. I don't think he probably just threw it in. And lo and behold, that is worth seventy dollars. And that's the low end of what these sell for on eBay with the box. Just a funky item. He had a ton of beer cans, but I picked this one up today. It says Old Frothing Slosh. But I thought it was kind of cute and funny, and it's worth about a dollar. So, hey, woohoo. Uncle Vinti picked this up, the Young Geologist Rock Tumbler. And who knows, maybe we'll tumble some gems, or possibly we might be able to use this for bottles. We'll have to see. Okay, also in that $110 lot, we found this really nice copper boiler pan with the lid and the wooden handles. And as you can tell, it's in really nice shape. I think I paid $15 for that. That's a steal. Love that. Then I also got this nice small trunk. I think it's, what did I say, Uncle Venti? 28, 28 by, by 18 by 18 by 21 inches 21, high. 21, I think, yeah. Yeah. And I saw one very similar to this. It does have the insert. Uncle Venti had to fix the wood, so it's drying right now. But it does have the insert, and we saw one online very similar that sold for $400. So I'm really happy with this. I paid $17.50 for this cute little trunk. This is Uncle Venti with the tool portion of the yard sale show. And uh, these are the tools that I got in that $110 lot that we bought uh, at the estate sale. Uh, there are three clamps. There's a a plastic cover which is unusual on the clamps which is nice. Uh, this is a saw clamp for, for holding a, a circular saw when you sharpen it. Yeah that's kind of neat. Yeah, it's homemade. It's a homemade, yeah. homemade job. Uh, this is a, a battery tester. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah it's a battery tester. Then there are a couple of tools for a, a Briggs and Stratton. This is a, a, a flywheel puller, and this is a spark plug tester. Also got an, a number of, of dies and taps. I don't know how many of them there are. There's quite a few of them. These, there's at least 20, uh, 20 dies, and, or 20 taps, and there's five or six dies in the handle. And then a number of tools for my metal turning lathe. Number of tools, and uh, and then this is a, a a caliper gauge protractor, caliper or whatever. This is a strap wrench. It's got a chain on it. I also found uh, this is a, a nipper. If you do uh, a lot of chassis punches and so forth in electrical work, this is a, a nipper. To nip out the, the aluminum chassis to fit your plugs or whatever you're going to put in. And this is a couple of rubber um, rubber heads for a, a, a rubber hammer that comes out of there. You screw on a small rubber hammer. And I got a couple of keys for a drill press. This is an arm for a caliper, a dial indicator for his, for measuring out, probably out a round of a, a drum or, or a, a disc for a, a, a brakes on a car. And this is an extension for a, a drill. And I got a number of countersinks as well. And what else? Oh, this. Yeah, what, you want to say that one till last? Okay, and, do the fishing. and this is a, a homemade fishing net. 
1959. And it's actually signed from 1959. And it was made by the uh, homeowner. Made by the owner. Yeah. It's unusual. It is unusual. And this is this is a uh, uh, one of those Dremel like the funkiest thing tools we found at the sale. Tools that usually hang like this and have a uh, uh, flex shaft hooked to it, but he's adapted that. He was a draftsman, so he put a racer on the end of it <laughs> and used it as an eraser. They actually make those. His sons mm. told us that that's what it was, and we didn't believe them, but we looked online, and sure enough, they actually make electric erasers. Yes, he was quite a, quite a uh, adapter. So that's it for the tools, right? That's it for the tools for the, the yard sale portion, the no. tool portion of the yard sale <laughs> show. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. And one last item before we sign off is this necklace. No, I didn't get it at the estate sale. I got it at the Goodwill. And it's sterling silver. And I paid $5 for it. They don't usually miss sterling silver. But I had a hard time. I thought I saw a marking on it, but it wasn't until I got home that I knew for sure that it was sterling silver. But yay, that doesn't happen very often at the Goodwill anymore. Okay, that's it for the yard sale show. We'll be back next week with more yard sale finds.